In a recent video, I said that we should take another look at the depth maps in DaVinci Resolve. Hi. The depth map is extremely useful in so many ways. It probably needs its own video. So I was thinking, let's do that today. I don't have a lot of time, but I'm giving myself 30 minutes to shoot this video and hopefully I can edit and publish it in the same day. All right, here we go. All right, we are in DaVinci Resolve Studio. This is the intro that you just watched. I'm sort of editing and shooting simultaneously, um, just because of that, you know, not having a lot of time today. All right, I got some uh, assets here that I think would be nice to use, uh, would be nice to try depth map on. First of all, I just want to say as well that there are a lot of similar there are a lot of similarities between depth map, power windows and magic mask. They can all do a lot of the same thing but in different ways. So if you've seen my previous videos, a lot of this might seem a little bit familiar, but I just think it'll be nice for you to have a bit of a grasp of what these different tools do uh, so you know how you can use them in your own project and which one suits you the uh, which one suits you the best. I really like this one, but maybe, I don't know if there's enough background here for us to play around with. Uh, I'm just going to grab this one of her walking along on this tiny jetty. Is that what, is that what it's called? Pier? Please educate me in the comments below. All right, let's just throw that in here. And let's also jump on over to the uh, color page. All right, here we are. Uh, this is our clip. Uh, as you can see in the effects window up here, I've already searched for depth map. And let's just throw that right onto our node right here. As you can see, it just sort of calculated the scene instantly, which is insane, I think. Uh, it already found uh, all the stuff in the foreground, our model, these uh, trees right here, and the um, reeds. <laughs> I'm struggling with my English today. Uh, I've got mine set to better uh, quality-wise, just to get a better... Uh, depth map for us to use. So the way this works is it calculates what's close to the camera and what is far away from the camera. Uh, right now, everything that is white or a light in color in this map is what's going to be affected by uh, the settings. If I uh, hit invert, uh, it's going to affect the background instead. So let's take a little look at something that I have showed you before in a different clip, uh, because I think it is pretty cool, and that is adding adding mist or fog to a scene that did not have any. Uh, so in which case, we want to affect the background. I just want to adjust the map levels a little bit so it doesn't affect so much of the foreground. I'm gonna push that back a little bit. If it's black, it's not going to be affected. If it's gray or white, it will definitely be affected by our settings later. So anything that I don't want to be in the mist, in the fog, will have to be as dark as possible. But I think this looks all right. Obviously, as I like to remind you, I'm not going to uh, give you any specific numbers or settings uh, for these things because they're only going to work on my clip they're not going to be the same on your clip, so you'll have to play around and find your own best settings. And that is how we learn. All right, so I'm gonna turn the preview off. As I said, it is the background that, is if, that we're affecting right now. So to create a fog, what I would do is I would uh, pull down the detail, because we lose a lot of detail in fog, right? I would also turn down the contrast Maybe not, ooh, maybe not that much. But we also lose contrast in fog, right? I think something like that looks pretty good around this area. Obviously, 
I don't want this much fog in my video. Usually when you see fog over a lake like this, you know, it's kind of low, you still see the treetops above it. Uh, so what I would do is add a power window on top of this. Uh, and I would draw it maybe something like that. Maybe feather it a bit. That looks kind of foggy. Maybe it's a bit dark. So I'm just going to jump into the contrast and pull that up a little bit. Yeah, that's not too bad. Not too bad at all. Maybe bring some contrast back. Yeah, that kind of looks like fog, doesn't it? Uh, another thing that I would do in this case, this is turning into a fog tutorial, um, but I would actually track the scene. I just want to find a later frame where there's a little bit more to track in the background. I want the fog to follow the landscape in the background. As it would in real uh, life. I'm just going to track one frame. I'm going to go into interactive mode. I'm going to delete all the points on her. Because I don't want the window to be tracked uh, on her. I want the, the window to be tracked on the background. Let's see if this works or not. Maybe it'll work for a bit of the... It's not perfect, but I think you get the idea at least. Uh, let me show you what it looks like. <laughs> Alright, I think that's pretty nice. <laughs> Just turn this off. This is without the fog. With the fog. <laughs> I think that's pretty nice. All right, I think we stayed on the fog for a little bit too long. Um, what else can we do? What else can we do? Uh, let's just delete everything we did with this uh, clip. All right, the depth map is back on here again. Just going to adjust this a little bit better so our models are definitely being affected by the mask. I'm also going to adjust the far limit a little bit. There we go. Turn off the preview. Let's just say I wanted to bring up the uh, the light, the brightness on our model a little bit in the foreground. That's one way of making her, our model in the foreground, brighter while keeping the background as it was. And not only our model, because since it's a depth map, it's going to affect everything on that same, on that same distance away from the camera as she's on. So as the tree, as she's next to the tree, it's going to affect the tree, but as the tree sort of disappears into the background, it's no longer going to be affected by our uh, depth map and our uh, adjustments to that depth map. As you can see right here, I just turn this on and off. It's affecting her, the reeds, and the tree. If we move a little bit further into the video, do the same thing. You can see that it's still affecting her and the reeds since they're on the same distance away from the camera. But the trees on the right side, right here, they're barely affected at all. Let's say we want to invert this because we think that the background is a little bit um, too bright. It sort of takes away the uh, focus from our subject a little bit. Um, as I said, the mask is inverted. Whatever is white or gray will be affected by uh, whatever changes we make. Um, so uh, I'm just going to use the curves. I'm just going to pull down everything like this. As you can see, everything around her is a lot darker now. She definitely pops a lot more in our video. Off, on, off, on. 
Maybe we also want the background to feel a little bit colder, right? We want this to be more of a Michael Bay type movie where the background's sort of blue and the foreground is really nice, warm and orange. <laughs> Something like this that actually looks kind of cool. This is with our dark blue background. This is the original. Dark and blue. Original. We definitely created something more moody. I guess we could just keep building on the same thing here. Let's. We can also make the background blurrier, right? Maybe it didn't feel blurry enough. There we go. Now the background's dark, blue, and blurry. Off. On. <laughs> One thing about the blur though is this is, isn't really the best way to do background blur like this. As you can see, it sort of gets a little bit glowy all around the edges. Uh, if you want to if you want to see a better way how to blur a background, I do have a video on that, so the link will be up here somewhere. Uh, let's turn this off. Let's create another one. Um, one last showcase, I think. Let's adjust the map again. I'm going to hit this isolation button. As you can see, it sort of focuses on our model. Let's gonna see if we can make that a little bit better. When you hit post processing, you can see you get all this detail back in our mask as well. I'm just gonna leave this off for now, but it might be useful for you. Um, then I'm going to jump back to our timeline. I'm just going to duplicate this one. Uh, and I'm going to turn that off. I'm going to add a alpha output. Turn the depth map off on our bottom clip. And now we can do stuff like this. Add text behind. Our model, can we not? Oh, sorry, did I turn off the wrong one? <laughs> and there we go. There we go. Now we have some text behind our model as well, thanks to the depth map. Now, as you saw, what I did before was I isolated just her with our depth map. Uh, if we don't want to do that, maybe we want the text to sort of disappear behind the reads as well. I think we can do that. We can try at least. I'm going to use post-processing for that just to bring some detail back. There we go. Contrast, oh, maybe something like that. See how that looks. <laughs> I mean, it's not perfect, but it's also not too bad. I'm just gonna make this a little bit bigger. Move that down a little bit, just so we see what happens in the reads. <laughs> I mean, we also made the edges on her a little bit uh, strange, so that might have to be a uh, its own separate layer, right? But I think you can see sort of what I was going for here at least. In the beginning of the video, the tree is sort of covering up the title. Uh, over here on the left side, the text sort of disappears into the reads. Not, perf not perfectly, but uh, all right. I do hope you uh, have a better sense of what the depth map can do for you. Have a look at my previous videos on the magic mask if you haven't seen those and let me know what you use the most when you're color grading your stuff. Are you like a power windows person, magic mask person, or a depth map person? Or maybe all of the above. All right. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.